Good evening, everyone. Welcome to this in-person and broadcast forum featuring, featuring candidates for the two city council seats open in the city of Maplewood. The city of Maplewood will broadcast this forum live at vodmaplewoodmin.gov and on Comcast channel 16 in Maplewood only. In the next day or two, the forum can be watched at any time on vod.maplewoodmn.gov and YouTube channels for Maplewood MN, Comcast 16, and the League of Women Voters Roseville area YouTube. Thank you to the City of Maplewood and Comcast for providing resources for this forum. The goal is that the public be able to see this event in its entirety and not just selected scenes or sound bites. My name is Kathy McComber, a member of the League of Women Voters Roseville area, which covers the communities of Falcon Heights, Lauderdale, Little Canada, Maplewood, and Roseville. I am the League trained moderator for this forum and not a resident of Maplewood, so I don't have the privilege of voting for these candidates. The League of Women Voters encourages informed and active participation in government, works to increase understanding of major public policy issues, and influences public policy through education and advocacy. The League is proud to be nonpartisan, neither supporting nor opposing candidates or political parties at any level of government. We envision a democracy where every person has the desire, the right, the knowledge, and the confidence to participate. Our membership is open to anyone, any gender, 16 years or older. The League of Women Voters Roseville area has a long-standing history in our communities of providing unbiased candidate and issue information that is widely used by Minnesota voters regardless of their political beliefs. This forum is a public service provided you with an opportunity to better understand the views, opinions, and commitments of the individuals running for city council so you can make a more informed voter decision. You're welcome to submit as many questions as you would like. Note cards are available for this purpose, and you can hold up your cards. The ushers will collect them throughout the forum. If you address a question to only one candidate, all the other candidates will be given the opportunity to respond as well. Please note that the questions, which are unclear, hostile, or of a per personal nature, will not be asked. Those that fall into the same general topic area may be consolidated to allow us to cover as many topics as possible in the allotted time. There is never enough time to cover all the issues. If you have answers that were not addressed, please contact the, con the candidates directly. The ex views expressed here tonight are those of the candidates and not those of the League of Women Voters. Sponsorship of this forum is not an endorsement by the League of any particular candidate. The candidates participating in tonight's forum have all agreed to the forum rules which were included in their invitation to participate, and I know they will give us respectful and informative evening. Three candidates on the Maplewood ballot for the council's two council seats are present here this evening. We'll start the candidate forum with opening statements. Candidate Alex Klein is unable to join us and has provided a, both an opening and closing statement. I will read them for him at the appropriate points in the evening. Each candidate will be given two minutes for their opening statement and two minutes for their closing statements and two minutes for answering que the que each question. The opening statements will begin in alphabetical order and the order of answering the questions will be rotated. I will enforce the time limits in fairness to all the candidates. For the candidates, please note our timekeepers have a 30 second remaining sign and a 15 second remaining sign so you're able to see your time. 
You need not use all your time, and when your time is up, you may finish your sentence. We will adhere to the time limits in the interest of fairness. Let's begin with the opening statements. Ms. Cave, would you begin? Sure, thank you. Um, welcome tonight. Uh, I want to thank the League of Women Voters for having us here at the forum tonight, all the men and women who are in the audience, those on TV, and also our candidates who were able to make it tonight. My name is Rebecca Cave. I've been in Maplewood over 25 years, and I raised five of my children there. I'm currently a sales director for a medical device company. Um, I am on the city council, and I, um, and I, I want to express my gratitude for the community electing me three and a half years ago to serve on the council. We have a diverse and demographically challenged community which stretches from Maplewood Mall in the north down to Newport in the south. The top priorities for me, I'd like to continue if elected. I'm a proud supporter of public safety. I'm committed to protecting and preserving our parks, public open spaces and trails, especially the Bruce Fentel Trail. We've had a lot of traffic the last few years on it with the rush line and the purple line on it. And I've always been an advocate to not have anything um, on that trail besides walking, biking and enjoying the trail for people. I am committed to business retention, development, and bringing jobs to Maplewood. I've also been committed and want to continue to provide housing options for all people. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Fitz. Thank you so much to everyone who is uh, in the room with us tonight and everyone viewing online. And I would also thank my fellow candidates. Uh, as the non-incumbent here, this is my first time doing one of these, so please bear with me if I'm a little bit nervous. Uh, my name is Stephen Fitz. I am a third generation trade unionist, and that is the background that I would like to bring to the Maplewood City Council. Um, I am also a former vice chair of the Ramsey County Library Board. Uh, among my priorities to bring in, um, I've been a Maplewood resident for 13 years. Uh, we moved here with an eye towards the quality of life and to start a family. I have a 10-year-old and an 8-year-old at home. We are avid users of the Maplewood Park system, and we have seen a decline in the overall quality of that system over our time here. So one of my key priorities is reinvesting in the Maplewood Park system, bringing programming for Maplewood youth back in-house instead of having it contracted out. Uh, additionally, I would like to see more affordable housing built in Maplewood. Um, I think tonight we'll have some disagreements up here, but one thing that I do want to commend the current council majority on is uh, shooting down the current plan for the ponds on Century with the $500,000 homes. I don't believe that meets anyone's definition of affordable. Um, one quick note, my governing philosophy coming out of the labor world is anyone who sat at a negotiating table knows that there are times that you fight and yell and scream about an issue and then the next item on the agenda you have to work together. That is a key uh, tenet of my governing philosophy that I'd like to bring in. And I'll yield the remainder of my time. Thank you. I'll now read the statement from Alex Klein, the candidate who was unable to attend. First, I'm sorry that I can't make the forum, forum tonight. And secondly, I wanted to thank everyone who voted for me in this primary election. I appreciate your support. I am a homeowner and have lived in Maplewood my entire life. Why am I running for Maplewood City Council? Well, I think our city government could be more transparent and more accessible to the people of Maplewood. This is what I would do when elected. Number one, require better use of our Maplewood monthly. Use a page to inform people of the actions taken at the previous month's council meetings. Use a page to better explain how our tax money is spent, the number of police calls to the different areas of Maplewood, the number of fire calls, the number of ambulance calls, and detailed progress reports on housing development projects. Two, retain and expand the city's diseased tree removal program to pay for tree removal. I've used the program and it's important for our community. 
return public comment to our city council meetings. Our city council should always have time to hear its residents. Preserve and protect the Bruce Vento Trail in its natural state. I support the Purple Line BRT bus being route being placed on White Bear Avenue. No buses on the trail. Please vote for Alex Klein for Maplewood City Council on November 5th, 2024. Now, Ms. Ms. Vicencio. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Nikki Villavicencio. Today is a day that many of us have a very vivid memory of our nation being attacked. That experience sh shaped our communities going forward. We witnessed the sacrifices that first responders made to save their community members. I was in high school at the time of the 9-11 terrorist attack in Portage, Wisconsin. I saw how first responders from all over the country were willing to go to New York City and volunteer their help. That was the first time I realized that all politics are local, is local. As a Maplewood City Council mom, member, I have been grateful for the dedication and commitment to this community that our Maplewood first responders have demonstrated repeatedly. When the COVID-19 pandemic hit our community, Maplewood responded. Many organic and organized aid was provided to thousands of people. Many people were uns unsure of the future and what would community look like. One thing was certain as a member of, uh, oh, as, as one thing was certain as a mother of a young child and a member of a disabled family, I was thankful for Maplewood staff and their steady work ethic and commitment. Lessons have been learned from the global pandemic we experience. Lessons are still being learned. Another thing for certain is how healthcare and government systems need to work to be centered around the ones that are most affected. Two weeks before the state shutdown, I was appointed by Governor Walls to chair the Council on Disability. I'm rerunning for Maplewood City Council because my journey to leadership is much like the last few years we have lived through, unconventional. I moved to Maplewood 12 years ago. I was appointed to Parks and Recs Commissioner and to the North End Development. I ran for City Council in 2018 and lost by five votes. Then in 2020, was elected by over 7,500 votes. I adapted my campaigning to yard site chats, and I will continue to build an inclusive community. Thank you. Now we'll begin with the questions. The candidates have not seen any of the questions, and I'll be asking them in a random order. Oh boy. Um, so I'm going to start with Miss um, Cave. What are your top, what do you consider the biggest challenge and conversely the biggest opportunity in Maplewood? Um, I think the biggest challenge at this time would probably be the focus around affordable housing. Um, I'm proud to say that as a member of the city council, we have focused on affordable housing in our city. And in Ramsey County, which we are part of, I believe we have almost hit our max that the, that the county wants everyone to have. Um, we've been very diligent in that, in that, uh, in getting affordable housing, the Gladstone redevelopment, redevelopment area, um, we have two multifamily affordable housing units going in. We have a 60 unit senior co-op on Lake Phelan. We have 150 unit multifamily market rate on Frost and a 72 unit assisted living memory care on County Road C to name just a few of them. So I feel like this council has been um, very adamant at making sure we have affordable housing, multi-use, we have senior housing, we have all different kinds of housing. And down in the south, um, with the ponds, not to, you know, I don't want to eliminate South Maplewood, but the ponds, we had a vision on the council to have a, a market rate a living down there, um, homes, executive homes or townhouses. Um, the area of the ponds is very, uh, 
very unique. It's the last piece of, of great property we have in Maplewood, and it's a food desert down there. Um, there's no real good busing, there's no good places, so affordable housing wouldn't fit on that location. Um, and the fact that this is a beautiful piece of land, we've asked the, the, um, the project DR Horton to put something more with a market rate higher end homes down there. Thank you. Thank you. Stephen, would you be next? <clears throat> With regard to Maplewood's greatest challenge, um, I would argue that despite the fact that Maplewood's roads are in the best condition they've been in in decades, our greatest challenge is transportation. Um, I think we need to start taking a 50 year view of what we want that to look like. While the roads are in great condition now, that is not sustainable for 50 years with current population growth. Um, I would make an argument for the Purple Line being a high priority for the next council. Um, and I would note that when it comes to uh, lower income housing from, to more affordable housing, um, the current council majority used the building of the Purple Line as a justification for reduced parking spaces at several of those affordable housing projects. So I would hope the current council would come around and continue to support. Thank you. And Ms. Villavencio. Can you restate the question, please? Of course. What do you consider the biggest challenge and conversely the biggest opportunity in Maplewood? Um, I think the, the biggest challenge and opportunity is access to government. Um, one of the uh, leading issues that I've worked on in my whole um, professional career is good governance. And I think good governance deserves to be prevalent in every level of government. And it means accountability and transparency. And uh, that means translation of all our documents, of our website, and um, just doing a more fierce job of outreach is really, um, I think, the key thing to do. And I think it's always important to know that it's not something that we're going to accomplish, but something that we have to continue to keep, keep um, going for. And if we have good governance and we have great outreach, then our, our solutions to our problems will be more diverse. Thank you. So we're gonna continue with um, Stephen Fitz. There are two questions from the audience that are addressing um, housing issues. So one is uh, how affordable housing is a perennial problem any, everywhere, what future affordable housing projects would you support? And the second is the majority of affording ho affordable housing projects are in Gladstone. Why is the high concentration of projects being built there and do you support this high concentration in one area? Uh, those are very good questions and I, yep, I appreciate the connection between them. Um, I would say that the, the great strategy going forward is going to have to be higher density housing. Um, as opportunities come up to redevelop parts of the city that are already developed, uh, there's gonna have to just be a greater concentration. Um, so far as why there's a concentration currently in the Gladstone neighborhood, there's a lot of arguments for that, um, for how that has come about. Um, I do not support it being so concentrated because we are looking for a more livable and walkable city. Um, I would like to see affordable housing in the ponds and in the southern leg of Maplewood. Thank you. Ms. Via Vicencio, I'll get it by the end of the night. <laughs> um, that, thank you. Uh, can you restate the question again? I sure can. Affordable housing is a perennial problem everywhere. What future affordable projects do you support? And the majority of the affordable housing projects are in Gladstone. Why the high concentration of projects built there and do you support this high concentration in one area? Well, I would say I don't think it's a high concentration of just affordable housing. I think we have, as a city, done a really great job of balancing 
affordable housing with market value housing right in the Gladstone area. And, you know, I think that um, we need to be really creative about how our housing is going to be in the next 50 years. And I think um, a lot of it has to do with the development that we have been planning for the last over 20 years in this area that um, the intention was transit lines being in this area and that um, work transit and um, affordable housing is something that is very connected and um, needs to needs to be the future of Maplewood thank you and can you read it too you bet okay. it's a two complex questions yeah. yes. Affordable housing is a perennial problem everywhere. What future affordable projects do you support? And the majority of affordable housing projects are in Gladstone. Why the high concentration of projects built there and do you support this high concentration in one area? Sure, I'll, I will start by saying um, I'm definitely a supporter and it, you can look at my record um, of affordable housing. Uh, we'll start with Gladstone. There was a master plan done in Gladstone in the early 2000s, and the master plan had a lot of mixed use, which we do have. Like the other candidate mentioned, we have a market rate, we have senior housing, we have senior co-op housing, and we have multi-family uh, affordable housing. You can't get any more and any more diverse than that. It's everything in the Gladstone area. We have Beacon Interfaith who is opening up a, or having a small townhouse unit there. It's, it's a concentrated area because it was, it was under a plan for redevelopment. A lot, most of Maplewood has already been developed, so anything we do in the future is going to be a redevelopment, um, excluding the ponds. I mean, it's a type of redevelopment, but it's, it's going to be when we find land or we have land, the, the developers are going to have to be creative how they use this land and what, what they come to the council with and what proposals they come to us with what they'd like to use it for. So I'm in favor of hearing anything that they have. If they, you know, if they need TIF, we'll go through that process. If they don't need TIF and want to do market rate um, and all the affordable housing that they want to bring in, they just come to the council with that. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Villa, Villa, Villa Vicencio, I just need to go slowly. The next question is about public safety. What programs do you support to help keep youth out of the criminal justice system? Well, I, I believe in proactive approaches with any, any of our youth in um, our communities. I, um, you know, I've worked um, alongside um, many of the Tubman staff um, in that, it, that is in Maplewood and uh, Emma's place. And I've learned a lot about um, the struggles that families um, of many backgrounds face. And um, I know that we as a community can do better by our, our youth. And um, I think it's important to know uh, or to remember that we are the ones that need to be showing the youth how to do it better, um, not waiting for them to behave differently. And um, that's really my approach about anything with government is to reach people where they're at. And I am in huge favor of our social work workers in our public safety departments. Um, and I had great conversation with our public safety. I usually do a ride along with our public safety and have had great conversations with our chiefs of police and fire on a regular basis. And I know that they have the best interest of our community in, um, in mind every day that they come to work. And I really have always appreciated their commitment. And, um, you know, I think um, the training and guidance that we have in Maplewood um, is, um, you know, a par above everyone else. And I want to help continue to make that happen. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Fitz? <clears throat> Pardon me. Um, this is such a very broad question. I, I wish I had more than two minutes for it. Um, 
I will start by saying that I'm a great fan of Maplewood Public Safety. I've had a number of interactions with them over the years, and I've always been very impressed by the polite and professional uh, demeanor of every single individual I've dealt with. Um, I think one of the keys, our public safety department is doing a fantastic job. So we need to look at other areas that we can work in to help with uh, um, keeping youth out of trouble, I believe was the gist of the question. Um, <laughs> One area that I would like to see is greater partnership with community organizations for additional programming by the Maplewood Parks and Rec Department. Give kids things, other things to do that are more productive and um, engaging and uh, enriching. Um, I don't know who, how many other folks have kids, but the uh, Children's Museum prices keep going up, the Science Museum prices keep going up, Programming for free activities keeps decreasing. Um, I would like to see Maplewood Parks and Rec bring programming back in-house and partner with organizations like the Maplewood Area Historical Society and whatnot uh, to give more opportunities out there in the community to keep kids out of trouble. Thank you. Ms. Cave? Can you repeat the question, please? You bet. Thanks. As soon as I can find it. <laughs> Public safety. What programs do you support to keep youth out of the criminal justice system? Okay, thank you um, for the question. Uh, public safety, it, I'm, I'm a huge supporter of public safety, and I think it really encompasses a lot more than just the police and the fire department in our city of Maplewood. And I'm so proud to say that our city of Maplewood has the best, and I, and I know I'm, 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 you know, on staff here, but the outreach program that we have. We have a huge outreach program that our city has put together that asks staff to go out to all these functions throughout the year and volunteer and participate and meet the kids and meet the youth and meet the parents. And it's the most engaging thing our city has. And you know, to do more, I mean, you, you could ask for more volunteer, but our, this summer we've gone to parks where we had tons of volunteers there. There was jumpy houses, there was petting zoos. It was, it was really great to see all the different communities get together. And our staff was volunteering and the, the firemen were there, policemen there. And even kids in the neighborhood, um, we unfortunately had a an incident happened and the, in, in the police showed up and the kids were like, let's go get stickers. And they wanted to go run because they knew the, the cops had stickers and they hand them out. And it was like, whoa, no, this isn't a, the police are coming just to do a little visit in the neighborhood, you know, and they walk through and they hand out stickers. Um, so it's really great to see after all the turmoil in, you know, 2020 that, that um, our, our city is really great with the police and public safety. So thank you. Thank you. For the next question, we'll start with you, Mr. Fitz, and I, I know this has been partially addressed, but we'll ask it anyway. Do you support the proposed rapid transit along the Vento Trail? And if you do, can you defend the, or this is, what is or your position on placing the BRT Purple Line on White Bear Avenue? jobs, housing, and business are on White Bear Avenue. Why put the purple line, why not put the purple line there? Uh, yes, that is a very easy one for me to address. Um, I can't imagine a set of circumstances, I don't pretend to be a transit expert, but I cannot imagine a set of circumstances where the uh, bus rapid transit going down the Bruce Vento Trail would make sense. Um, it going down White Bear makes a whole ton of sense. Um, I would like to see more data from the Met Council on the impact of that before there are any final decisions made. Um, yeah, so far as I can tell, uh, all the key players seem to be in favor of it going down White Bear Avenue. It makes a lot of sense. It would be beneficial to students at Century College, to employees at St. John's Hospital. Um, any number of different stakeholders have weighed in on this and are in favor. Thank you. Ms. Villavicencio. Thank you. Yes, so I'm in favor of the purple line. I sit on the CMC committee um, under the Met Council um, on behalf of uh, the city. And I have advised um, uh, the, as um, an advocate on the purple line for over five years. And, you know, I know that 
the purple line is the future for Maplewood in the next 20 to 30 to 40 years. And it's, uh, like I said before, it's about getting people to work and getting them home and being able to take care of their family and doing it in a timely manner. And I know that all the things that we are looking at under transit, the microbus, um, many of the other options that are out there are dependent on the main line of the purple line going down. And I'm really looking forward to that. And um, as far as whether it should be on the Bruce Vento or the White Bear Avenue, you know, I am someone who is very, um, I very, I take it very seriously about representing the people of our community and the voices that they have. And so, you know, I have listened to many of the residents in Maplewood and I hear very loudly that they say White Bear Avenue is their preferred option. And I understand their reasoning. And so on October 14th, I know that is when the date of that um, choice will happen. And um, I'm looking for that, forward to that vote. Thank you. Ms. Cave? And can you read the question, please? You bet. Thank you. Do you, do you support the proposed bus rapid transit line along the Vento Trail? And what is or defend your position on placing the BRT purple line on White Bear Avenue? Jobs, housing, business are on White Bear Avenue. Why not put the purple line there? Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. um, number one, I have never been in favor of putting the BRT on the Bruce Ventil Trail. I think the trail is there for a purpose and it's not for a bus. So I've never been in support of that. So I still am not in support of that. Um, we did move the, we did vote and moved the, uh, the purple line to be looked at down White Bear Avenue. And that's where it currently is looking at um, the process of the purple line is on White Bear Avenue. And our council right now is discussing what the future of that will look like. I'm in favor of transit. I think it's a great thing. We need that in our city. How it's done. Um, I do have questions on how it's done and options that are out there. I think there's a lot of good options. The plan that was given to us that we were going by um, is a 28-year-old plan. And to look after, you know, the plan being 28 years old, a lot has changed. A lot has changed in our city. And I think there's some real viable options out there. Thank you. Next, the next, for the next question, we'll start with Ms. Villa Vicencio. What is your position on the Maplewood Community Center by residents? In other words, the center is too expensive for many residents to use. Well, uh, when, so when I, uh, before I was elected and I was a parks commissioner, the Maplewood Community Center was solely um, ran and, and owned by our city. And then as I was uh, um, further into being a parks commissioner, um, we enter the city, I should say, entered into a, uh, uh, um, a contract with the YMCA. And it went from a year contract to a three-year three contract. And I think as a resident, as a council member, I haven't been 100% satisfied with um, the relationship that we've had with the YMCA. So I would like to further that relationship with the YMCA and also work with our, um, our community members to see how we can best use the community center to the best of its ability. But I do know and um, I'm very excited and proud of the events that do happen at the community center and think that it's, it's um, an asset to our community. So thank you. Thank you. Ms. Cave. Thank you. Um, the community center, that's been, a, that's been a topic of conversation for many years. Um, the community center, you know, it, it changed hands. Um, wasn't during my you know, a tenure up here, and I, I think it was kind of a hard thing. Um, the community center is very expensive. It has a lot of, uh, you know, projects that go. The pool needed to be replaced. Everything, and it all came out of Maplewood's pocket. But 
you know, we, we had to make choices whether, you know, you were just going to shut the pool down or you're going to keep people coming there. I do think there's a lot of residents that use Maplewood from Maplewood, especially Silver Sneakers. I know they have a vibrant group that come in there all the time. I know the prices are actually lower for Maplewood residents also. Um, and the Y has been working, you know, with pricing. I think the relationship with us with the Y is after COVID, we had a drastic um, challenge with the with at the Y because of membership. We still had to pay for everything, but no one could really go in and use it. So the COVID did have a big turning point for the Y, and we are working with that, and our city staff is working with them. So hopefully we can come up with um, a win-win situation to keep the Maplewood Community Center going. Thank you. Mr. Fitz? Thank you. Um, I, I feel like this is one of the trickier problems facing Maplewood right now. And I think anyone who thinks there is an easy and obvious solution um, is very optimistic. Um, I would say that I would agree with Nikki that it is a, a real jewel of the community and has so many uses and functions and is wonderful to have. But we are shutting a lot of people out of it, especially working class residents of Maplewood. Um, I would like to see a harder bargain driven with the YMCA if they're going to continue that partnership uh, with significantly reduced fees for Maplewood residents. Thank you. The next question is more broad and we'll start with Ms. Cave. What is the framework that you use ethically and morally to make decisions for me? This would be the the audience member and all the residents of Maplewood as our elected representative. Sure. Um, first, coming into Maplewood, I have the knowledge that it's a very diverse community and it's a very demographically challenged community. And every community in Maplewood is unique. There's there is, you know, you have the north, you have the east, you have the south, you have in between. And when you go through there, people are very proud of their neighborhoods. They're very, they own their neighborhoods. They, they love their neighborhoods. They love their parks. They want to make everything vibrant. And I think as a council, we have done that. Um, these neighborhoods are unique also. They have different demands. You can't just blanket everything and say this is what Maplewood needs. You have to know the individual neighborhoods and you have to know what their wants are. And I feel like I do that. Um, there are, um, sorry, I just lost my thought, train of thought. <laughs> um, <laughs> there are, uh, with those communities, you have to be prepared to um, listen to them listen to all the individuals and understand what it is they want and you have to represent that. Not everyone gets what they want just because they come to you, they email you, they forward. You have to figure out the best solution for the city. You have laws that you have to follow, you have ordinances that you have to follow and you have to balance all that together. Um, also, we have a lot of people who live in this community, their families have, they've bought houses from their parents, they live there now, and so there's a lot of deep roots in this community. So you have to be very, very respectful of people with that too. Thank you. Thank you. Stephen, Mr. Fitz. Uh, would you be so kind as to restate the question for me? Yes. What is the framework that you use ethically and morally to make decisions for residents of Maplewood as the, their elected representative? Yes, thank you. Uh, as mentioned in my opening statement, I am a longtime trade unionist and third generation trade union activist. Uh, one of the great battles of the labor movement was the fight for the eight hour day. And a lot of my framework comes from the, the chant of that era, which was eight hours of rest eight hours of work and eight hours for what we will. I look through the framework of those three key things and how we can improve those for the residents. Um, to boil that down a little bit further, everything comes back to giving the, the fundamental basis of quality of life. Uh, I would agree with Rebecca about the unique neighborhoods that people are very proud of. We, can't, uh, we can give folks the tools to do that uh, through good transit, through good paying jobs, uh, and through enriching activities for children. 
Thank you. Ms. Villavicencio. Sorry, do you mind uh, repeating it again? Of course. Thank you. What is the framework that you use ethically and morally to make decisions for residents, all the residents of Maplewood as their elected representative? So um, when I first ran for office, I ran because I felt that um, we didn't have enough representation for, from all aspects of our community. And so I am Maplewood's first disabled Filipinx, and I'm proud of that. And so every decision I make is through the lens of a disability justice model, social independent living model. And um, two weeks before the state shutdown, I was appointed by Governor Walls to chair the Council on Disability. And uh, we worked with every level of government to ensure moment by moment information was being given at times. And we address gaps in our system throughout that period of time. And why that's significant to my work in the city council is because it, sh it showed that systems need to be created by and with the individuals that are being most impacted by the decisions that our government makes. And so those, that's the way I govern and now the way I make my decisions. Thank you. Now the next two questions, the next question, uh, we'll start with Mr. Fitz, have to do with home ownership. How will you support single family home ownership? The concerns of homeowners have been dismissed with poor code enforcement lack of rental property oversight, and a focus on developers over owners? And how will you address the rising property tax burden on residents? I'm sorry, could I have you state that one? That was a lengthy list there. I wanna make sure I cover everything. Yes. So how will you support single family home ownership Concerns of homeowners have been dismissed with poor code enforcement, lack of rental property oversight, and a focus on developers over homeowners. And how will you address the rising property tax burden on residents? Thank you. <laughs> with regard to single family, I, so these do tie together quite a bit. Um, one point that I would make is a term is getting used a lot of market rate housing. Um, and I think one thing the city council can do is attempt to rein that in as best we can with developers because market rate housing sounds wonderful as a term. What happens when the market is completely out of control and that rate is not affordable for working families? Um, with regard to code enforcement, uh, having Having an older home that is always being, has, I'm always working on something, um, I completely agree that code enforcement is something that needs to be, ha have more focus and more resources. I would like to see the city, the city expand uh, the code enforcement. Um, I apologize, I'm my own, I can't read my own handwriting at this point in the day. Um, if you would please, yes, yes, I'm sorry. So that was code enforcement, yep. then it's lick, lack of rental property oversight, Yep. focus on developers over owners and property rising The, the tax rental rates. property oversight I feel falls into the code enforcement category. Um, and finally, with regard to developers, um, I will again compliment the, the current council on uh, DR Horton and sending them back to, to square one with the ponds at Century with their um, fairly ridiculous market rate homes. Um, I would like to see more of that. I would like to see a harder line with developers in Maplewood. Thank you. Ms. Villavicencio. Um, thank you. Um, I think, you know, I think generational wealth is an important thing to work on. And I think as a as a local government, we, we can play a role in that. And I think that we need to be creative around um, what organizations we can work with. I think in the last few years, the city has been more creative around working with like Beacon and other um, organizations like that, that can bring in housing that doesn't just look at 
okay, you live in this house, wait, great, we'll put you there. But what if you need supports? What if you need other things to live in the community other than just a place to live? And that's what I'm really looking forward to in the next four years when, get, when I'm reelected is that, um, you know, quality of life is really important. And what does the city government have a role in that quality of life? And I think we have a really great opportunity to do that. As far as code enforcement, I've been very pleased with our rental code enforcement. You know, it's a, it's a new program. We, we don't, um, we don't have a lot of staff that actually does it, but the ones that do it go out and do a really fabulous job. And, um, you know, so I would be in support of continuing looking at more staff to that, to that, those roles so that our city can get um, inspected quicker or um, whatever the needs may, may be. Thank you. Ms. Cave? Thank you. Um, for home ownership, I want to say as a current council member, I'm also part of the EDA, which is an economic development authority. And we have spent um, some good quality time trying to figure out how to buy up the foreclosure houses, um, tackle the ones that are just left and debilitated. There's a lot of like code and enforcement, um, and people think it isn't happening, but there's legal process for everything. So we have a lot of houses that are just, you know, that are sitting there, um, but there is a very lengthy process to get these houses turned over. And it's unfortunate, but that's how the law goes. Um, so for home ownership, we are looking, you know, we've, we've um, asked our public finance advisors from Ellers to come in and gave us a great uh, gave us a great start on what we need to start putting away so we can help make phone homes affordable for people and let them have ownership. Um, I'm looking forward to continuing that. And rental oversight and code enforcement going together. We do have a great code enforcement officer. Um, 2019 and during the COVID really put a lot of stops to checking out things. And he wasn't able, he or she um, wasn't able to go to the places and do that. He has caught up. Um, so our code enforcement, I think, is a great, we have a great system for it. You can always have more people, but that's also um, putting you know, more salary, so then you're asking for property tax to be lessened. Um, so the property tax burden comes when you got to figure out what it is you're asking for and what do you want and what are you willing to pay for. Everybody wants everything, but there comes a time when, you know, we supply these things, you have to pay taxes for them. And a lot of property tax also is dependent on Ramsey County. So I really feel like in Maplewood, if you really look at your taxes, it's Ramsey County, you know, has the bulk of it where um, Maplewood, we've really been pretty, pretty good for our citizens. Thank you. Thank you. For our next question, we'll begin with Ms. Villa Vicencio. What do you see as the future of the Maplewood Mall? I love that question because um, when I was uh, Parks and Recs Commissioner, I got to sit on the North End Task Force and I got to help create our North End Plan, which includes our Maplewood Mall. And the things about that I'm really, really focused in on are um, families and seniors being able to access the mall and use it in a way that's far more productive. So, you know, working on, yes, the development and the businesses that come in and, and that will stay there, but also thinking about how we can make it safer for pedestrians, for moms and dads to be pushing their strollers to the mall from the park. Um, seniors that come from their buildings, there are several senior buildings right around in, right around the mall and in the north end area. And we need to make sure that they can come in and out of that area without any danger of um, getting hit by cars or, um, you know, getting swore at by people on the street. And, um, you know, that's something that I, um, you know, I, 
I frequent that area very much, and so I keep track of it a lot. I talk to our city staff on a continuous basis around when I see garbage and things like that. We are a five-step green city, and one of the things that I really want to work with, uh, work on in the next four years is um, making sure that our garbage in our city is going to be picked up, because if we are a five-step um, green city, we should pick up our garbage. Thank you. Ms. Cave? Yes, can you repeat the question, please? Yes. Okay. What do you see as the future of the Maplewood Mall? Okay. Um, I'd love to have a crystal ball on this one because, uh, I, you know, to see what would happen to the Maplewood Mall, um, you know, it, it, it's, it's a, it's a, big piece of property and we just discussed it at one of our last council meetings um, and when Ellers was here which I was talking to you about that you know 85 percent of the mall are uh, of the mall 85 percent of it is the value of it is the property itself and that's it and that's kind of you know that's kind of like the future of malls is not you know, malls are becoming extinct. Online shopping is taking over. Nobody wants to pay leases for space. Um, we're seeing lots of retailers back out. Um, fortunately, we did, you know, one thing that is great with the Maplewood Mall is that the Hmong Village, the owner of that, purchased Sears. And that has given me a great inspiration for the mall that there's gonna be some movement and there's gonna be some positive action there. They have a great vision of what they wanna turn Sears into. Um, upstairs and downstairs, the space to them is fantastic. And they also wanna look at putting senior housing on the outside, a farmer's market. So to have somebody come in with a vision like they did to our council and show us, you guys would be really impressed to see what opportunities there are out there for the mall. So I think if this goes forward, which you know I know it will, um, it could possibly add to other sales within the mall um, for like or places that are going to complement the Hmong Village. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Fitz? I think it's an unfortunate reality that malls are dying around the country, but one thing that I have been watching is the uh, increase of mixed use space within malls. Uh, when I was the vice chair of the Ramsey County Library Board, the Maplewood Library was renovated and they took over a large chunk of space in Maplewood Mall. And every time I went there with my kiddos, I had the thought of how amazing would it be if we could turn this into one of those mixed spaces with some housing, with some public services, with some retailers, with um, all that space coexisting. Unfortunately, I don't have a magic wand and cannot just make that happen. Uh, from a perch on the city council, my goal would be to support that kind of thing to the extent that we're able with uh, increased public safety and renovation of the surrounding area. Thank you. For the next question, we'll begin with Ms. Cave. How well is the city doing at creating a sense of belonging for all residents? Um, that's a great question, and I, and I think we as a city are doing fantastic. Um, there's a lot of uh, change and asks that have been done by the city, by the city staff who've accomplished them. I know we've had um, language barriers in the past, and we have increased our website, um, forms that we send out, different applications that we have for multiple languages. Um, um, can you repeat the question? I forgot the second part. How well is the city doing at creating a sense of belonging for all residents? Okay, and then, um, thank you. Uh, I got a little too excited there. Um, and, and, you know, and I do get excited because I go back to my outreach. Our city staff is fantastic with outreach. And the places they go isn't just like north, they don't go to the south, they go to every single neighborhood. So all these neighborhoods are touched by everyone at the city, staff, public safety, you name it, um, city council members. So it is a great asset to have such a great outreach community and I think that has, what has made a difference with Maplewood. Thank you. Next we'll go to Mr. Fitz. Thank you. 
at some point this evening, I'll figure out how to turn on my microphone with one touch. Um, I think Maplewood is, as a, a rapidly diversifying, you know, majority minority city, um, Maplewood is developing a sense of belonging for all citizens, not as well as I would like, however. One thing that I do worry about when it comes to inclusion in government decision making is that a lot of decisions are based on the folks who show up to meetings, which is not a luxury that a lot of folks can afford. Uh, if you are a single parent, if you are working multiple jobs for any number of different reasons, it can be difficult to show up and participate in that democratic process and have your voice heard. And I would like to make sure that we are including all of those voices when we talk about things like transit and housing. Thank you. Ms. Villa Vicencio. So I look at this as, um, uh, um, along the lines of what Mr. Fitz said about belonging in the sense that um, I feel very passionately that it is a human right to know what our government is doing about our lives and that we should be an active role in that or we should as residents have active roles in that. And so I believe that in order for Maplewood residents to feel that they have a better belonging to our community and to our city, that we need as a city to be better at outreach, we need to be better at meeting people where they're at, and that means that we have to be unconventional about finding those people and finding out how to speak and communicate with those people. And um, you know, I'm excited about that work. I'm joyful about that work, and I love that work. I think we do have a great foundation of belonging in Maplewood. I go around this city all the time and see that residents are proud of where they live and have lived here for generations. And I want that to be something that everyone in Minnesota knows, that Maplewood is a great place to live. Thank you. For the next question, we'll begin with Mr. Fitz. What is the city's role in supporting the transition from fossil fuels in transportation? That is a very interesting question. Um, the city's role in transitioning away from fossil fuels in transportation I can see a scenario in which hybrid or electric uh, public safety vehicles would make sense. Uh, beyond that, I don't know that the city is going to have a really significant role in this particular regard. Uh, I mean, the city is not responsible for uh, maintenance of transit vehicles and their fuel supplies and that sort of thing. Um, so unfortunately, I, I don't have much on this one. I would like to see, um, especially for, you know, police and, and ambulance vehicles, um, hybrid would make a lot of sense and electric could make a lot of sense there. I would like to see that transition, but beyond that, I'm not sure what the city is able to directly do. Thank you. Ms. Villa Vicencio. Um, well, as I mentioned before, Maplewood is a five-step green city, and I think all of us in Maplewood are really proud of that. So continuing that work and figuring out ways that we can continue that work. But I think, um, like uh, Mr. Fitz said, it's a it's challenging question for a city government to address. But I think um, I can address it in, 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 in the ways that I say that I support public transit because if more people ride public transit then we will use less fossil fuels and um, then our city will have uh, less of that footprint and so I am all for public transit in many different forms in all the forms that it should be in Maplewood including the purple line. Ms. Cave. Thank you. Um, I don't pretend to be an expert in this. Um, and so fossil fuels, that's, that's really, I mean, it's a good question. But, you know, besides saying what my fellow candidates up here did, having hybrid, you know, vehicles possibly in our city, um, you know, there's autonomous buses out there, there's electric cars, there's 
an environment committee and natural resources that we have in our city. And these are volunteers who recommend to the city council options like these when they come up. So these are extremely important committees that the city council relies on and I myself rely on. So we don't have to be experts in everything. So these are the type of questions that will our answers you know that come to the city council but they come from this committee and these people are more experts in solutions for this so they present us with the solutions it makes us look good but it's really them you know doing the work um, Another thing I would, you know, consider doing is having more charging stations around Maplewood. I know they have them at like High V and at the at the um, library, but maybe that's something, you know, that our future we need to start looking at when we implement new buildings or redevelopment comes in that they do have charging stations there. Thank you. Thank you. So the next question puts you in the hot seat again, Ms. Oh, Cave. Okay. How will you plan to work with organizations to support youth, elders, and families? For example, the Maplewood Historical Society, the Y, et cetera. There also is a question about Maplewood DHS services being closed abruptly. How would you support reinvestment to provide those services in Maplewood again? Okay, can you repeat and then DHS to stand for? DMV. Okay. Okay. Uh, so that's two part. That's yeah. Right. And I guess they're not linked then. Okay. <laughs> but that's okay. You want to do one at a time or both? Yeah. Okay. I mean, I'll start. You might as well give them both to me and then I'll. How will you plan to work with organizations who, to support youth, elders, and families? For example, the Maplewood Historical Society, the YMCA. And, and then the separate one would be. DMV. Would be the DMV. Sure. Um, I will start with uh, supporting the, the youth. I, you know, um, I've always been a proponent of supporting our youth, and I think we, we talked about that before, all the outreach programs that we have. The Y, um, we do have programs in the Y for youth that are at-risk youth. Um, they can get passes to go to the Y um, to have a safe place there. Um, I think all of our schools, I am, you know, District 622, 623, I am in favor of anything that our school districts have that they want to collaborate with us. Um, very big proponent. I mean, our youth is our future, and we need to look at it, and, you know, we need to have our money spent there. Um, also parks. Parks are a big thing to me because I grew up with playgrounds where you could go to playgrounds, you could play a sport, um, you go home, mom never saw you. Um, and now parks are, you know, we don't have the playgrounds anymore, but parks are more essential than anything. And it's a jewel in Maplewood that we have so many parks. I will continue to support those parks because kids need that. And revamping them, it costs money. We're looking at Harvest Park right now um, and putting in things that are updated, not just the playgrounds, but, you know, a skate park, you know, a... Uh, uh, you know, biking, they, they have these things where you can bike on these trails, you know, it gives kids some skills. These are things that we need to change, but it costs money. And nobody, you know, they want to keep the taxes down, but add everything. And, and we really have to look at things. We do have to update our parks, you know, in Maplewood at times. Um, DMV, the question about the DMV, yes, we did remove the DMV from Maplewood. Um, there are locations all around, you know, people can go to. Uh, there is White Bear. There's privately um, owned ones that you can go to. We removed it um, during a city council discussion uh, that we had because of the money coming in was not, it was costing more than what it, it was costing more than what we could keep it going for. Thank you. Mr. Fitz. If I may, with the, the forbearance of my other fellow candidates up here, um, given that those were two very separate questions, I would ask that Rebecca actually be given a chance to answer that more fully. I, I would call that two separate questions that two minutes was not sufficient to answer. If you'd I'm like the time, I'm sorry, I don't mean to. I'm good. Okay. Well, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Certainly. Um, I'm going to try to squeeze this into two minutes then. Okay, here we go. Um, <clears throat> With regard to the DMV, that was, 
I've been interested in Maplewood municipal politics for quite some time, but that was one of the times, that, the moments that I really got active and engaged. Um, I understood the decision. If the balance sheet does not work, the balance sheet does not work. But the way that it was done, I felt was very disrespectful to Maplewood residents and to people that working people will schedule weeks in advance and take off of work and then to have it, the rug pulled out from under them that they cannot get this done, this vital piece of paperwork, this renewal of their license, whatever it may be, um, I was highly opposed and I thought it was very disrespectful to Maplewood residents. Um, with regard to the second part of our question, uh, supporting youth, uh, the elderly and families, um, it all comes down to opportunity and economics in my opinion. Uh, strong families come from families that can put food on the table, that are able to work and support themselves and sustain, and we need to provide the tools for that, including the, um, I'm gonna make an argument for the Purple Line, being able to reach good paying jobs without having to own a car, which is an enormous expense for working families, is absolutely essential and is a way to support um, children, the elderly, families in general. Thank you. Ms. Villa Vincencio. May I hear the first question first again, please? Sure. Do you, do you want the DMV one first? No, the, the, the other, other one. first. How will you plan to work with organizations to support youth, elders, and families? Example, the Historical Society, the YMCA. Um, yes, I, as a city council member, that is one of my favorite things to do as a city council member is to work with the organizations that um, work specifically on culture and history. Um, I sit on the, as a city council member, the Historical Preservation Commission and used to be on the historical um, board for Maplewood. And I really believe that um, in order to, I think it's important in Maplewood to honor the uh, legacy that Maplewood has built up and to build it into the next um, generation of what it could be. But we have to know the past to know where our future is going. And as far as the DMV um, decision, I voted to not shut down the DMV, uh, mostly because of uh, the residents feeling that the decision was made too quickly and without enough information. And also because I felt that um, post COVID, we didn't have enough opportunity um, because we had never opened it up fully to um, before COVID we, where anybody could come in during business hours to the DMV. And so that was the main reason why I was opposed to shutting down the DMV. Um, so yep, that's, that's it. Thank you. It's now, we're now down to our final question, and then we'll follow with closing statements. Uh, and Mr. Fitz, we'll begin with you. Discuss the infrastructure needs you see in Maplewood. There are quite a few different infrastructure needs. Um, High on the list, I would say, uh, we haven't had a chance to discuss this yet this evening, so I'm glad this question has come up. Um, I am always shocked at the lack of sidewalks. I think 70 years ago, 60 years ago, when the, the city was incorporated, there was an argument about this and it was just put aside, and since then it has just been a can that is kicked down the road by every successive city government. Um, I would like to see a maybe a 20 year plan to start implementing a system of sidewalks in Maplewood. Um, if you've had to walk or, or ride along the edge of a busy road, it is terrifying and it discourages people from being out in their communities. And this is a problem that we can solve and we know that because the entire rest of the country has solved this problem. So that is a, a key infrastructure need in my opinion. Um, I would make yet another pitch for uh, transit options, um, including bus rapid transit. Uh, lastly, I do, uh, would like to see additional charging stations uh, as electric vehicles become more and more commonplace in our community. Thank you. Ms. Cave? And can you repeat the question, please? Yes, discuss the infrastructure needs you see in Maplewood. Sure. Um, I just want to say how proud I am, once again, on the City Council to work with an excellent staff in our Public Works Department. They are 
they're another top-notch department that we have. They do our streets, they do our snow plowing. And if anyone, I don't know, I mean, a lot of people here, I don't know if you live in Maplewood, but if you've ever, if you've ever been in Maplewood during a snowstorm, during a plow season, it, our roads are done and they're done early. And it's a fantastic thing to live here because it's something that, it's, I, I got used to it. And then I went and house sat for my sister in St. Paul. And <laughs> it was during a snowstorm and I was like, what? And then all these ruts were everywhere during the week and it didn't get plowed. And I was just like, oh my gosh. So I was so happy to be back and we hear it all the time, but there's just kudos out to our staff. Um, it's amazing. We have a capital improvements plan, a CIP that we do five years out. What it is, is our staff goes out every three years and measures the they, they have a scale how they do it, um, but they measure how bad the roads are. And it's a scale one to one, uh, zero to 100. And their goal is to get all the roads at a minimum of 70 throughout, the, throughout our city. And we're on track for that. Um, we have added new patchwork. It's, it's like a, it's a new patching program that we started for roads that, weren't, that are on the program, but there's, there's a lot of issues we have a new patchwork program that we can just go over and do an overlay. So we don't have to do digging up and it doesn't take a lot of time. Um, and one more thing, uh, we have livable, walkable community. Sidewalks are needed. And just so people know, um, our city pays to have the sidewalks shoveled because we don't have our, our Maplewood community. They do not do that. So it's a cost to taxes. You know, the more sidewalks you have, we have to pay to have those, you know, and our city staff to clean them. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Villa Vicencio. Uh, thank you. Well, I do agree with my candidates around the infrastructure, around um, sidewalks. I think livable streets is something that I support as well. Um, but it, there's work to be done. Um, I was just with a group of seniors this week, and that was one of the number one things that they mentioned, is that um, having uh, a more... Um, I guess a more uh, adaptable sidewalk plan is what needs to be happening. And as a city council member, um, what I've done so far is um, I've tried to work with the city staff on a snow removal plan. Um, and uh, because uh, historically we have been very good about removing our snow, but I think um, it's important to know that in a city such as ours, um, there are there are points that need it maybe quicker than other places. And so I think it's good for a city to kind of make that assessment that, um, oh yeah, there may be a senior building way over there in that corner that they need to be um, shoveled out a little bit sooner than maybe that corner over there. Um, and um, knowing those, um, those important points are, are uh, really important to me as a community because um, the last thing I want to hear is a resident slipping and falling and and but I will say that I do a lot of work in St. Paul and our streets are much better than St. Paul's. I'm always happy to come back to Maplewood and not be jarred in my chair. So um, infrastructure is a huge thing. Again, I talked about the North End plan. I think that's a big part of um, supporting the development of Maplewood. Thank you. Now we'll have our two minute closing statements for each candidate. I'll begin with Alex Klein's closing statement. He's asking for your vote for the Maplewood City Council on November 5th, 2024. I'm not an incumbent, so I don't have all the answers, but I have lived here all my life and own a home by Goodrich Park. Many people throw the Maplewood Monthly away because there is nothing in it. With the postage and printing costs spent each month, why not make the Maplewood Monthly something worth reading? If we want to engage our residents, why not provide them with information in the Maplewood Monthly on the actions taken by the city the month before? If we want to engage our residents, why not add a public comment to the city council agenda so residents can speak at the council meeting like they do in North St. Paul? I support the expansion of the disease tree removal program where the city pays for trees, tree removal. Diseased tree removal is important in managing the spread of emerald ash borer 
because removing infested ash tree, infected ash trees is a key strategy to prevent the beetle from moving to new areas. Many people cannot afford to do this on their own. Lastly, being an outdoor enthusiast, we must preserve and protect the Bruce Vento Trail in its natural state. I support the Purple Line BRT bus route being placed on White Bear Avenue. No buses on the trail. And then again, he asks for your vote for Maplewood City Council on November 5th, 2024. So for the uh, closing statements, we'll start with you, Ms. Cave. Okay, thank you. Thank you again, League of Women Voters, for being here, all the citizens in the in the audience and then those on TV. I wanna thank you for giving me the opportunity to express my feelings and thoughts and, and things that I've done for the city in the last three and a half years. I am asking for your vote for re-election. Um, if you wanna look at my record, um, I've spoken about my record, but feel free to go on you know, the city's website. Um, you feel free to call me. My phone number is on there. Um, you can call me with questions, concerns, anything. Um, I just, I feel like I am at, at the start of something, you know, you get three and a half years in and it, it's three and a half years, but man, we've got some great things going on in the city and I look forward to continuing those efforts. I do want to do a little plug in because outreach is so important and we've talked about it so much that on Friday, September 20th at Hazelwood Park, um, we got rained out with our fireworks, and Maplewood puts on a fantastic display. We are going to have fireworks. It's a Friday. It's kind of a back-to-school theme because we have so many kids. So this is exactly the kind of outreach we were talking about tonight. There's going to be food trucks there, um, I believe music, and the fireworks are at 8 p.m. So um, there's a petting zoo inflatables and it's really all the community this isn't just for Maplewood this is for everybody to come over and my last 10 seconds I'd like to say um, this is 9-11 and if I could give 10 seconds of silence for all the people who've died um, in 9-11 and thank you Thank you. Mr. Fitz. Thank you so much to the League of Women Voters. Uh, this is an invaluable service for folks to learn about the individual seeking to represent the community and the residents. Um, this has been a fantastic experience and you all have my very sincere thanks. Um, I also, as someone who always takes the timekeeper role when I am able to, want to thank our timekeepers. That is a oft overlooked job where you have to always be on the ball and watching a time and I appreciate it. Um, I am also going to ask for your vote. I am a someone who will fight like crazy when it is needed and it can also compromise when that is needed. I am a common sense voice for Maplewood and I would be it would be a great privilege to serve you all on the City Council. Ms. Via Vicencio. In 2020, I was honored to take the oath on my family Bible with my foot. So what I'm trying to say here is Maplewood deserves a city council that is not afraid to chart a new course. My reelection is about a commitment to the residents that their voice is the most important one at the table. Good governance deserves to be prevalent at every level of government. It means accountability and transparency. I've spent my life explaining to my friends, my family, colleagues, and the community how government processes work. My reelection is about making sure that we are a community that is inclusive. Local government can do a much better job of explaining how processes and documents they receive affect their lives. As a leader, I have always been passionate about people having multiple ways to voice their opinions and testimony. In Maplewood, it is important that my reelection honors our unique cultures, environment, and businesses. As the city council member appointed to the Historical Preservation Commission and the CMC Purple Line, I know that future events, projects, and development will only be successful if we honor what Maplewood has now and fiercely fight for what Maplewood's values are for the future. 
Thank you, League of Women Voters, for having this. This is an awesome opportunity to um, be with democracy and be participate with democracy. Thank you, residents, for living in Maplewood. Thank you for voting. And thank you to my fellow candidates um, for making this fun and, 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 and exciting. <laughs> Thank you. That completes our forum, and it has been an informative evening. Be sure to review the campaign literature and candidate websites for additional information. And remember that all opinions expressed this evening are those of the candidates and not the League of the Women Voters. The League does not endorse any candidate or party. Thank you to all the candidates for their time tonight and for stepping up to run for office. It is a great responsibility. We need participation in all aspects of democracy for it to work, from informed votes to elected officials. Now that you have more information, encourage your friends and neighbors to listen to this forum. Then vote on or before Tuesday, November 5th. If you need to update your voter registration, go to mnvotes.org, which is part of the Secretary of State's office. You can find more information about candidates and voting at mnvotes.org and at lwvmn, lwvmn.org. Links to all the candidate forums and additional voter information can be found at the League of Women Voters Roseville area web on Facebook and at the website lwvroseville.area.org. Thank you so much for joining us and good night. <laughs>